going to uh, add a few James Bond reviews over the coming months, so I thought I'd start by giving a massive plug to a podcast called James Bond Radio. Uh, this is a brilliant podcast. You can find it on their website, on Facebook, on Twitter. Uh, you can find the podcast itself on iTunes and on YouTube. And um, I'm quite new to this uh, podcast. Uh, they've been running for, I think, about four years. And uh, I've been really impressed with what I've listened to so far um, because I've loved James Bond for a long time. Uh, you know, not just the movies, the books as well. And um, what I'm enjoying about the podcast is that I'm learning new stuff. There's a lot of detail. Some of the podcasts are quite long, they're quite in depth. But what I would say is that if you're new to James Bond, it's actually really worth um, getting into it and, and listening to them all. Um, and uh, if you're an old hand and you think you know it all, then be prepared to unlearn some stuff and relearn stuff and, and hear about new stuff because it's really, really good. And they get some really cool interviews. Um, I've only listened to about 26 of them, but they're, they're nearing 150 podcasts now. Um, so it might take me a while to get all the way through them, um, but I'm really enjoying it. And um, one of the things that they do when they interview somebody uh, on their podcast is they uh, ask them seven questions and I think well the chances of me ever being on their podcast for any reason are pretty slim but I quite like the questions so I thought in the great spirit of do-it-yourself videos I would just kind of answer those questions. So actually got exactly what I'm going to do. Um, if, you're, if you like this video please subscribe there's going to be more James Bond content coming up um, but in the meantime here are my um, answers to the 007 questions that they have on their podcast. My favourite Bond film. Mm, my favourite Bond film is On Her Majesty's Secret Service. I think that's the best Bond film there's been. Casino Royale, um, Daniel Craig's Casino Royale is right up there. Um, but for me, I think On a Magic Secret Service is the closest a film has got to one of the Fleming novels. I think George Lazenby is brilliant, a little bit wooden, like we can't deny that. But the film itself is fantastic and the book is so unusual for the fact that, you know, obviously Bond gets married and, you know, um, so there's an unusual subject matter in it, there's some in, interesting um, subplots, it makes it very different but it also is very much in the tradition of Bond and uh, I think everything to do with that production just comes, just comes together and it's, it's, a brilliant, it's a brilliant film, full stop, um, let alone being the best Bond film. So that's what I'm plumping for, on a Majesty's Secret Service. Favourite Bond book? This is trickier. I want to say On a Majesty's Secret Service because I do really like that. I want to say Casino Royale. I want to say Live and Let Die. <laughs> um, there's some, uh, one of the things I like about Fleming's books is that he, he doesn't give up trying to do something different with Bond. So even something that doesn't work, like The Spy Who Loved Me, which really doesn't work. Um, uh, and it doesn't work mainly because it's written by Fleming, who is clearly quite a misogynistic bloke, um, but he, he, it's written from the first person narrative of a female character. Um, it's terrible, terrible. But at least he's always trying, he's trying to push the boundaries. He doesn't want Bond to be any particular thing, I don't think. I get the sense that Fleming wants Bond to be something different each time he comes down to write it, and probably he was getting, well, I think we know that he was getting bored with writing it. Um, but uh, what I'm going to plot for is Moonraker, and I like Moonraker uh, for a couple of reasons. Um, first of all, there's this wonderful uh, scene in the book where Bond is um, driving to where he knows he's got to face the, the main villain. Um, 
and it describes him driving down this, this um, road in Kent past Leeds Castle and uh, Fleming injects some of, you know, like all Fleming's books, he injects a lot of his own um, uh, fascinations and, and knowledge into the book. So you've got the roads which, uh, which Bond is driving down, which obviously Fleming has driven down. And, but you've also then got this interest that Bond has in motorsport, and I love motorsport. And so you've got this passage about um, uh, the Nürburgring in Germany and, and how Bond might have wished he was a racing driver or a mechanic or whatever. And I think that, that just that stands out for me. I love that. But also I like, uh, I like the plot, uh, this, this idea of this mad... Uh, this mad genius that has managed to uh, change his identity and um, and manage to um, manage to convince the world that he's something that he isn't um, it is really good it's a compelling story so I'm going to go for Moonraker my favorite Bond book favorite Bond girl uh, Diana Rigg, Diana Rigg as Tracy, um, I think, uh, yeah, I think she's pretty much perfect as a Bond girl. She catches his heart and manages to get him to marry. Crazy, what on earth's all that about? But she also saves him, which is really cool because he's, you know, depicted as this uh, invulnerable uh, beast of a man and actually... Uh, as elements of Honor Majesty's Secret Service that cl well, clearly he isn't that character. And I think that comes out really well there. Um, so yeah, Tracy, Diana Rigg. Uh, without a doubt, Timothy Dalton. Timothy Dalton's the best actor to have played Bond. And for my money, he's the most perfect representation of Fleming's Bond on the screen. There's been a lot of talk about Daniel Craig's Bond being more like Fleming and the films I think, maybe Casino Royale we can say is, is very close um, to the book in places but I don't think Daniel Craig's characterization is close to Fleming's Bond. Uh, I think Timothy Dalton nails it and I get a sense that he meticulously tried to nail it as well. I think he really, he does it really, really well. Uh, he's, he's ruthless, but there's, there's also that, um, that vulnerable sense in him. He's thinking about what to do that's right. There's a, there's a moral, a moral dimension to the character, which there is in Fleming's book. In, in Fleming's books, the character doesn't particularly enjoy killing, uh, which sometimes you get the sense that, um, uh, the film character does rather enjoy that. Um, I get the sense from Dalton that there's that his brain is working. Bond's brain is working all the time in every scene that you see Dalton in. So I'd go for Dalton. My earliest memory of Bond. When I was when I was choosing which film was my favourite, I was conscious that there's a couple of movies that are really, really close to my heart uh, as a Bond fan. Uh, the first is Octopussy because it's the first one that I saw at the cinema, and the second is The Living Daylights because it's the first time I saw a Bond film at the cinema twice. I forced my dad to take me again. <laughs> because I loved it so much. Um, but uh, my earliest memory comes back to Octopussy um, and it isn't the trip to the cinema to see it. I, I was aware of Bond before that. I must have seen it um, on TV. Often in the UK we got to see James Bond films on a, on a bank holiday on a Monday. Everybody, you know, with their families and end the evening with, with a Bond film. Um, so I was aware of Bond as a kid and then uh, we took a trip to Peterborough um, and they just happened to be filming I think it's the Neen Valley Railway 
where they filmed parts of Octopussy, the, uh, the steam train, the circus train. And I remember, I was very young, but I remember a bunch of props at the side of the road, or maybe it was at the side of a station. And I remember seeing this wall, and there was a sign that said, knock on this wall, and people were going up to it to knock on it, and just this hollow cardboard sound coming back. It was made out of plywood or whatever, but it looked incredibly convincing. So they weren't just filming there, they were also engaging with the public. And so my f earliest memory that I can really consciously of Bond is seeing those props and interacting with them. And, and every time I see Octopussy, uh, obviously starting with that first time that we went to the cinema a year later, uh, I think back to that, to that moment. So it's become very, very strong in my, in my mind. Um, yeah, wonderful. Who takes their kids on holiday to Peterborough, though? Piz Gloria. I want to go to Piz Gloria. Very simple. Not sure I like skiing, though. <sighs> OK, I've got a couple of stories couple of stories there's I think these are Bondian people can decide um, I used to work for the government in fact I was I was at the grade that Fleming says that Bond was at a senior executive officer um, for several years over a decade and I worked at the home office um, for my sins and there was a time when I had to go to a meeting which was at the prison service headquarters. I don't think I'm breaking the official secrets out by saying this. And I was, I was chairing the meeting and the permanent secretary, the top person in the Home Office, was going to be there. And when we finished the meeting, he said, I've got my official car, I'll, I'll take you back to Home Office HQ. I thought, okay, fine, I'll get to ride in the official car, how exciting. Uh, and um, then we got snarled up in traffic and he said, I'm going to be late, I'm going to be late, I've got a meeting at Downing Street with Tony Blair, I'm going to be late. So, uh, he didn't really talk like that, he was a little bit, <laughs> a little bit posher and a little bit more calm. Um, he said that what he would do is he would carry on taking me back to HQ, but the car would drop him off at Downing Street and then carry me back to HQ. And I just thought we'd pull up on Whitehall and he'd get out. But we got to Downing Street and the gates, <laughs> the gates opened up. And, and I'm in this official car riding up Downing Street. I'm sure Bond must have done this, right? Um, and we're riding up Downing Street and then he gets out at the top and there's lots of press watching. He gets up, we do a three-point turn on the presser, trying to look in the car and see who it is. I'm giving him a little wave. Probably Bond wouldn't have done that, I don't think. Um, and yeah, so a three-point turning down the street and then back out the other way and back to work. But it was an entertaining few minutes of my life, which I think, I think is quite Bondian. And the other story is that a friend of mine was invited to a colleague, of, a colleague of his had written a novel. And they invited everybody they knew to this book launch. And this book launch was going to take place in a church. And I was taken along as a plus one. And when we got to this church, um, it was a little bit odd. There was lots of people flocking around the novelist's father. Her father had been president of Uganda, and he'd been one of the people that had deposed Idi Amin. And he was surrounded by people who just saw him as a beacon of democracy and freedom. And effectively, there might, I think there were henchmen there as well. <laughs> and um, uh, we ended up uh, really liking the women that were running the bar. This is a terrible story. Uh, we ended up chatting up the women who were running the bar and helping them. We ended up running the bar with them, taking over a little bit just because we, were, we thought we were being incredibly charming. 
uh, to these women who were running the bar. We thought we were being incredibly charming anyway. But we hadn't gone unnoticed. And when senior people came to the bar and we carried on what we thought was being charming, we were accused of being just a little bit cheeky. And nobody knew who we were apart from the novelist. And she didn't know us very well. She certainly didn't know me. And so I was, we were, we were literally thrown out of a church by the um, supporters of a former president of Uganda. It uh, would be more Bondian, I think, if we'd actually put up a fight and, and won, but we were terrified. So, <laughs> so we scarpered and uh, went to McDonald's for a debrief <laughs> down the road. But that's, I think, I think that's probably, those two stories, I think, are the most Bondian things I've ever done. I think just also to combine this with the location question, um, there's that little, uh, you know, in Die Another Day when Bond goes down to the old underground station, it goes over Westminster Bridge and there's this little door. I have seen into that door once and I was thinking, there's, I wonder what's down there, you know, it, does it really lead to this old underground um, station and um, I looked in the door and it's just this cupboard and I saw a workman having his lunch it kind of spoiled the whole thing really okay that's my that's my seven questions of Bond I hope it's been interesting uh, I will be reviewing a few things in the, in the coming months so come back for more and subscribe thank you bye bye